Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening and welcome to another wonderful evening service of refueling in his word, yes. in his love. Father, Lord, we just give you praise and all the glory right now because you alone are exalted. Yes. You alone are holy. Yes, Lord. You alone are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the everlasting one, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Yes. So we just want to give you glory right now. We just want to worship you right now. Yes, Lord. We just want to give you glory right now, right now. The King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever. Exalted, and I will praise this day. He is the Lord. He is the Lord forever. He's true. Exalted, forever exalted on high. I will praise you. You are exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise the Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Forever your truth shall reign.
worship belongs to you. Because you are a good, good, good father. It is who you are. It is who you are. And you just love us so much. We bless you, we glorify you, and adore you. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for having brought us up until this point in the middle of this week. We thank you that as we look forward to the rest of the week, we thank you because your goodness will not depart from our tabernacles in the name of Jesus. Give you praise and we bless you. We honor you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, you're welcome again to our, our midweek refuel service. And uh, we're still continuing in uh, where uh, we stopped uh, based on the series we're going through, The Power of Covenants. And um, I hope that by now you are getting some kind of uh, fresh uh, insights or fresh reminders or um, uh, a new instruction on the power of covenants. All right? Um, if you have followed us all through, you will discover that we said we have a covenant with God, and God is a God that does not um, uh, forsake his covenant. He is always, always looking out to fulfill his covenant. And 
uh, we're talking about covenants as an, as an agreement between two parties. That's just on the base level of the meaning of covenants. And if we're following that base level uh, understanding of what covenant is, we're saying also, it, it also means that we have a, an agreement with God, we have a covenant with God. And what we say is unique about this covenant is that everything about this covenant is God all through and through, all right? We did not do anything concerning this covenant. All that we did in this covenant is that God called us to come and accept this covenant. And in accepting this covenant, we are also uh, called to enjoy everything that is pertaining to this covenant. We said God initiated the covenant all by himself. It was his idea. God brought everything that was required for the covenant all by himself, all the provisions by himself. All right? God not only uh, uh, did that, God also uh, uh, made the provisions that are available in the covenant. In other words, the covenant agreement, the details of all of that was created and made by God. All right? Now, the guarantee also for the covenant was also by God. All right? So, all through and through, God made sure that he made everything available for the covenant. And above all, um, the blood that was required for the covenant, which is the blood of Jesus Christ, was made available by God. God's idea. Everything. From the beginning to the end. All God's idea. The only thing that God wants from me and you and every other person that will be a part of this covenant is to just come in and accept this covenant and then begin to live according to the covenant. And God guarantees that the workings of the covenant, um, the infallibility of the covenant, still rests on him. All right? What a wonderful covenant that is. What a wonderful agreement. What a deal God has given to you and me about this covenant. We talk about the covenant. We talk about the blood. There's no covenant that is without blood. And we said in this covenant that we're in with God, it was the blood of Jesus that ratified this covenant. In other words, because the blood of Jesus has been shed, it means that this covenant is sealed by the blood, all right? And because it is sealed by the blood, it is irrefutable, it is indestructible, it is indeniable, it will always work. And if the covenant is not working, it is not because God is not making it work, it is because from our own angle, we're either ignorant of the covenant, we are, or not just being ignorant of the covenant, we are also uh, maybe not taking cognizance or remembering what the covenant is all about, or that we're even in a covenant with God. And, um, and so we can depend on the covenant, we can rely on the covenant, because God that cannot fail is the one that guarantees this covenant. And as much as we uh, 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 put this covenant to work, or we put the covenant to use, or we decide to begin to act according to the dictates of the covenant, we are guaranteed results. We are guaranteed that this covenant will not fail. All right? So we talked about the blood. And that blood, and one of the things that we say, that that blood is a boundary against the enemy. And that's why, you know, that's why the covenant cannot fail. Because the, the blood is a guaranteed boundary against the enemy. All right? So, and we've talked about, we've talked about some characters in scriptures. We've talked about, you know, David, uh, a covenant, to help you understand what the covenant is. We've talked about the children of Israel and God, Abraham, um, uh, uh, yeah, and David and, and Rahab and all of those, you know, uh, 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 characters in scripture who uh, depended or who, who, uh, who, who, who went into covenant and God made sure that the fulfillment of that, of that covenant was guaranteed. And it happened to their life. If you don't understand it, go back to the previous messages and you will uh, have an insight into what we talked about in this uh, covenant uh, agreement. But um, for every covenant that is made, every covenant that is made, there are always contents. The covenant contains certain things, certain rights, uh, privileges, responsibilities, and all that that is contained in that covenant. All right? So that... Um, uh, if there are no agreements, then there are no covenants because the covenants must be based on something. It must be, there has to be a reason for the covenant. There has to be a purpose for the covenant. And because uh, there is a purpose for the covenant, there are certain things that is contained in the covenant, all right, that will make it work. 
And today we want to use an allegory of the covenant. Uh, want to use uh, 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 want to use as an allegory of our covenant between God and uh, of the covenant between God and us. The story of the covenant between David and Jonathan. All right. And to help us with that, I want you. I want to read from First Samuel eighteen verse three. Or let's, let me start from verse 1. 1 Samuel 18, verse 1. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So when you are looking at this, um, it, it, it's, it's, it, 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 it's a story of the journey of the covenant that David uh, David, uh, Jonathan, end up cutting with uh, Jonathan, all right? And just for a background, uh, Saul was the king of Israel. Uh, Jonathan was the son of David and the heir apparent to the throne. David was a servant in the house of uh, Saul and at some point also joined uh, Saul's army. But as the events ensued and Samuel, and, and sorry, and Saul began to be disobedient to the covenant with God or to be disobedient to the agreement he had with God. He was not keeping his own side or his own portion of this covenant. Guess what happened? Things began to fall apart for Saul and by extension for Israel. But Saul was not seeing his own issues. He did not, uh, uh, he was not cognizant of the fact that uh, uh, his, some of his actions and some of his activities were the reason why things were falling apart around him. All right? They had a covenant with God that their enemies, that they were protected from their enemies. But as long as they kept that covenant with God, they were protected. But when they were not keeping the covenant, guess what happened? Everything begins to fall apart and every of their enemy, old and young, big and small, great, mighty, or weak, began to overrun them. And Saul has been in many of these situations, or, and Israel, Saul and Israel by extension, have been in many of these situations where they have, you know, all kinds of people that, that could not even stand a tribe taking and running over the whole of the nation of Israel, all right? And so Saul, not being cognizant of what was going on, you know, kept hawking and harping on remaining on the throne by hook or crook or do or die. And so this was the basis for all of this conversation with uh, Jonathan, all right? So verse 2, and Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. That's David now. Verse 3, then Jonathan and David made a covenant. Jonathan and David made a covenant. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going. That's part of the major things we talked about on Sunday. Jonathan and David made a covenant. Because he loved him as his own soul. You know, one of the main things, what I want you to know about covenants, one of the main things I want you to know about covenant, especially the covenant we have with God, the covenant between God and man, the covenant between uh, us as believers and the God that created all the universe, is that it is based on love. The foundation, just like this, is based on love. The Bible says, and Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. I want to encourage you this afternoon that God cut a covenant with you because he loved you. And it's not just an ordinary love. Like the Bible tells us here, it is God loving you as his own soul. In other words, God loves you like himself. So the basis and the foundation for the covenant that we have with God is love. The Bible tells us that God commended his love towards us, that he, while we're yet sinners, God, uh, Christ died for us. The Bible tells us about the love of God, that this love of God cannot be compromised. The love of God is God himself expressing himself because the Bible helps us to understand that God is love. I mean, God, the Bible in that particular instance had no other word to describe who God is or what God is or what God is all about. The Bible just says God is love. In other words, this, the foundation of this covenant that we have with God is a foundation of love, 
or a foundation of God making himself the very ground upon which this covenant was founded. And that's why he was able to do all that. He initiated it. He guaranteed it. He brought all the things that were necessary. He created all the requirements. And all he's just asking you to do based on love is come and be a part of it. All right? So then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself. Now, I want you to begin to take note of certain things because these were the things that we talked about on Sunday and I just want to bring, it, bring them to your remembrance. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David. Remember, he gave it to David out of love because there was a covenant. And the covenant, the foundation of this covenant was love. All right? So Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him. And I want you to know that some of the things I'll be reading now have a significance. And we're going to see what the significance is to us as New Testament believers. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David. And his garment, so he, his robe, his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and all those in the sight of Saul's servants. In other words, when there is a covenant, and just like we have a covenant with God, there are always exchange of things that are going on. And we understand that even by oral tradition or written tradition of the people of the East. And even in Africa and everywhere where you go, you know, when there's a covenant, there's, there are always exchange of things. There are certain things that are being exchanged. But remember, our own covenant with God is different. It's different in the sense that God is bringing everything. In other words, the exchange is from God's side alone. And all we need to do is just to accept this exchange. All right? So, number one, the Bible says, the Bible tells us that Jonathan, Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David. So, what we, uh, when you talk about robe, when you talk about robe here, right? Uh, uh, when you talk about robe, it describes your position because he was like, he was, he was a king. And kings put on robes. All right? So David, I mean Jonathan, took out his position. He, 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 he stripped himself of this position, of his position, his, his ordained position. He stripped himself of this uh, uh, position and handed it over to David. All right? What did the Bible tell us? What did the Bible tell us? The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, number one, he stripped himself of all the glory that he had just to come and uh, have, have uh, uh, an agreement or have, make an arrangement to have a covenant with us. And in that, if you look at, um, if you look at uh, Ephesians verse 4, Jesus Christ stripped himself, uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Jesus Christ stripped himself of his position and did what? He invited us to come and have that same position with him. And in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, Ephesians 2 verse 6, the Bible tells us, all right, that we are seated together with Christ in the heavenly places, far above principalities and powers and might and dominions and every name that is named and all of that. In other words, we have entered into that same place or positionally we have the same spot with Jesus Christ, all right? So that's one of the things that was exchanged. And I'm naming all these things. I want you to be conscious of this thing that you tell yourself every time until it comes into your sense, your consciousness, every time. That because I have a covenant with God, I am positionally seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So number one, he stripped himself of his position, which is his garment. Now, number two, I'm sorry, his robe. So the Bible tells us that he took out his robe and gave it to David. All right? And the other part of uh, verse 4 in 1 Samuel 18 tells us that he did not only take out his robe and handed it over to David, he also took his garment. 
what is the allegorical meaning of the garment, of his garment, you know, uh, as it concerns our relationship with God or our covenant relationship with God. Your garment has to do with your possessions. Your garment has to do with your possession. In other words, uh, number one, God has a position. He has elevated us to that position, to be seated with Christ. Number two, God also gave us his possession. Galatians 2.20 tells us, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. In other words, what God has as his possession is his life. And that life he has given to us. So he said, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself and died. Who, 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 who died and gave himself for me. Alright? So, God has given us his position, or he has invited us into that same position that he is now. And then he has exchanged his possession, which is his garment with us. And then number three, look at it. Again, let's go back to 1 Samuel 18. What is it? All right? Uh, and Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him, position, and gave it to David, and his garments, possession, and his sword and his bow. In other words, he did not just take out his garments and give it to him. He did not just give him his position, all right? But guess what? He also gave him his sword and his bow, I mean, his equipment of war. In other words, what was he saying? He's saying that your battle has become my battle. Your challenges have become my challenges. Your problem has become my problem. In other words, God is involved in our lives as long as it involves all kinds of challenges that we're going through. God is not leaving you alone. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In other words, I will be with you even unto the uttermost parts of the earth. The Bible helps us to understand, all right, that God has come to fight our battle for us. In the book of Exodus 14, 14, the Bible helps us to understand when it looks at, when, when it was talking to the children of Israel, uh, uh, when the Egyptians were pursuing them in the wilderness after they left Egypt and they were moving uh, to the promised land and the Egyptians were coming and there was trouble along the way, all right? Behind them were the chariots of the army of Egypt. In front of them was the Red Sea and all around them were hills and mountains and there was nowhere to be found. In other words, they were trapped. And what was next for them, no matter where they turned to, was death. And destruction. But the Bible tells us that God told Moses to relate to the children of Israel that you shall hold your peace and I will fight for you. I don't know what challenges you are going through today. I want to tell you in the same way that the covenant that you have with God has come to let you know or has engaged God, has come to engage God in everything that you are going through. In other words, all you can do is hold your peace and let God do what he's going to do. In other words, you can always count on God to help you to overcome every difficult challenges you are in. Because why? You are in a covenant with him. And one of the provisions of the covenant is that God will fight your battle for you. In other words, God has given you his armor. That's what the Bible says. Say, put on the whole, in Ephesians 6, um, Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. God has exchanged his armor for your own. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day. In other words, I'm just telling you this day that the covenant that God has for you guarantees you victory in everything that he does and that you do in every area. No matter what the challenge is, either small or big, God has you covered because of his covenant. And the fourth thing we'll be looking at concerning this covenant, all right? Let's go to verse 4 again, 1 Samuel 18. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him, robe that was upon him, position, and gave it to David, his, and his garments, possession, gave it to David. And even his sword and his bow gave it to David, which is uh, the fact that God is going to take his battle on, you know, and his challenges on. All right, and the fourth thing is that and to his girdle, his girdle, 
all right? If you look at, if you look at what girdles are, it is, you know, it represents strength, all right? It represents strength. And what does that mean? Because it is on your girdle or your belt. In, in the New Testament, the Bible calls it Ephesians 6. It calls, it calls that girdle uh, uh, a belt, all right? And that's where you put your sword, you put your, um, all your equipment of battles and all of that so that it can allow you to even move even when, you know, everything is heavy and all of that. In other words, God has, and that represents strength. God has also exchanged strength. In other words, within the context of this um, uh, uh, covenant, uh, uh, there's a provision for exchange of position. There's a provision for exchange of possession. There's a provision uh, for exchange of, 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 of enemies. And then there's a provision for an exchange of strength. That's why in the book of Isaiah chapter 40, the Bible tells us that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. In other words, God wants to give you his strength at every time. Every time you ask for strength, he's going to give you strength. Every time you ask for strength, he's going to give you strength. You know why? Because he has a covenant. And within the context of that covenant, strength, exchanging of strength is involved. He said, they that, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not faint. They shall walk, they shall walk and not faint and they shall run and not, they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and they shall not faint. All right? I guess so. But you get the point. And the point is this. That we are not alone in this battle of life. God has invited you to be in covenant with him. And in this covenant, there are certain things that are involved. Now, because of time, we're just limiting it to these four. This by no means exhausts all that is, you know, contained in the uh, provisions of the covenant. You need to go and search the scripture more, look, listen to the messages and all of that, and go back and search the scriptures for yourself. I want you to be like the Berean Christians who went about uh, 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 going back to search the scriptures to see whether they be true what has been taught them. All right? I want you to do that and go and find out more things. That, 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 could, that could even be an assignment for you and me, all right, for this week. In our Bible studies, in our time of silence, when we're looking for things, um, when, we're, when we're looking to study and read, the, and read the Word of God and expand our knowledge and our understanding of Scriptures, I, I am charging you to go back and go and look at, you know, what are the provisions, what are those things that are provision that are, in the pro that are provided for us within the context of the covenant, apart from this four, that God has given us exchange positions with us, possessions with us, enemies, and strength. It is my prayer this evening that God will help you to be able to realize that, number one, you are seated with Christ in the heavenly places, that, number two, God's possession, especially his prized possession, his life, has been exchanged for you, and therefore you have life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And three, that no matter what challenges you are facing, God is ever present with his bow and his sword to fight for you and fight on your behalf. And number four, that God guarantees you strength every time, in every situation, and in every circumstance, so that you can exchange your weakness for his strength. You can exchange your weakness for his strength. And so no matter what situation you are in this evening, I just want you to know that the covenant of God makes provisions exclusively to make sure that that covenant comes to pass. Let's pray. Father, this evening I just pray for everyone that is listening to me. I want to thank you for them. I want to thank you for their lives and their uh, uh, families. Father, thank you for helping us to understand one step further what the covenant is all about. And this evening, as we have studied some of the contents that the covenant contains, we thank you because you help us to be able to understand it, to be able to see it, to embrace it, to understand it, and to walk in the reality of the fullness of what God has done for us. Father, we just want to bless you and give you praise. For everyone this evening that is going through any kind of challenge, any form of challenge, in the name of Jesus, we say by the reason of the covenant and by the provisions of the covenant, we thank you, O God, because you are battling, you are battling the, for them. 
We are battling on their behalf, oh God. We are battling on, on our behalf concerning every situation that we're going through. We give you praise. It does not matter what the, what the circumstances are. It does not matter what the battles are, what the challenges are. We thank you today, oh God, in the name of Jesus because the covenant speaks for us. This covenant that has greater promises than the, promise, uh, than the, uh, than the uh, blood of Abel is speaking good things concerning us. It is speaking grace concerning us. It is speaking deliverance concerning us. It is speaking redemption concerning us. It is, it is speaking elevation concerning us. In every area, oh God, we we'll bless you, we we'll glorify you, and we we'll honor you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And if you have an offering, just go to our website. Just go there. If you go to our website, uh, you'll be directed. Uh, uh, if you click on uh, www.go-church.org slash give, and it will you know, help you to understand and, and, and give you um, uh, all the uh, platforms that you, know, you can give, all the methods that uh, you can give. And like I said, I want you to look at this assignment that I've given you, and that is that go out these four things, in other words, these four things that we have said or that we shared today does not in any way exhaust all that is contained in the covenant. Now, you need to go back and do your own research and, and find out some of the other things and begin to walk in the reality of the fullness of those things that God has made for you. I will see you on Sunday. I will see you on Tuesday. And I will see you next week, Wednesday. God bless you.